What's cracking like on YouTube? We are finally back with a new video. It has been a while, but we are currently number one, numero uno in the world, using um using a little giant hunter deck that I created with you. But it has been getting really popular the last 24 hours, and now everyone's using it. But man, I, I got that top spot. I got that top spot. Uh, you might be thinking, you're thunderstruck, aren't you? Number five in the world. What is this? Uh, well, actually, um. All the accounts ahead of me are currently glitched. So if you look at their trophies, it says 6.4k, and then you click on their profile, and then 5.1k. So, so that's why I am currently ranked fifth, even though I'm actually first place in the world. And this is the deck for those who are wondering. We have the real giant, we have the hunter, we have the fisherman. Um, all of these, all, every single card in this deck just synergizes so well together, creating the perfect combination for dominance. Um, so I know I know you guys aren't here for me. I know I, I know chat. I know um, you guys are here for the gameplay. So um, as you can see, we got on a bit of a win streak. Um, heading in to uh, uh, the top spot in the world, uh, we will be going over these replays. Um, starting with um, let's let's do do Musketeers, Eagle, and two point nine. I think. Because this Pekka match was pretty stupid. Actually, do you guys want to see Pekka? Okay, okay. Three Musketeers is easy. So instead, we're going to do Eagle on Pekka and the final 2.9 match. As you can see, we got plus 14 trophies from that final game, uh, which was enough to bring us to the top spot. Okay, here we go. Eagle. So, um, with this deck, you can always have like a solid starting hand no matter what. And um, healer, heal spirit is one of the best starting plays in the game, so we're just gonna cycle that. If they ignore it, we'll get uh, over 100 damage, so it's always a safe play. Um, I see he's leaking. I, I love to do this split. I, I play skeletons um, and bats in both lanes, and I play Valjoin at the bridge. It really absolutely blows their mind, they don't know which lane to defend. Um, and we get a lot of good, good, chunky damage here. Um, he ends up going with a really aggressive healer. Um, but we can defend that, the easiest defense in my life with Hunter plus the Fisherman to get the healer. And watch this guys, watch this. Oh, the King Tower activation, oh my god, it's insane. How do I do it? How do I do it? <laughs> um, anyway, so we do activate that King with the Saucy Saucy Heal Spirit. Um, Hunter will be defended by the Bar Battle, well played to him. And as you can see, he has Barbarian Hut now. So Barbarian Hut is one of the best counters to the Royal Giant. It can completely shut down any RG push. Um, and with the help of the Heal Spirit, that's going to clean up most of the bats and so the RG push is dead. But thankfully it killed most of the Barbarian Huts, so it's not a big deal. And we're going to get a value log on six Barbarians. Let's go. With help of the skeletons, those barbarians will be handled by the tower. Um, he plays eagle on them in the back. Not a big deal for us. We can just defend with hunter, fisherman, even fireball. We have lots and lots of answers to his eagle and push. This deck is absolutely broken. It can defend anything, man. And there you have the hunter. That hunter will let the uh, and there you have the fisherman. That fisherman will let the hunter go to town on the healer plus the e drag. So very easy defense. Um, Eagle and pushes just get completely shut down when you ha when when they don't have that eagle. And so all you need to do is move that eagle into the opposite lane, and you're big chilling. So we go with the aggressive fisherman that will shut down all of the barbarians. Um, so that RG is going to be pretty much full health. Um, and the barber is dead. So that was my thought process behind that. The fireball to get the e drag and um, pretty aggressive fireball, but it allows the RG to get one extra hit. So it was worth it. Um, and so far he's done not much damage at all to our tower. I know I can outcycle his barbarian hut here and I successfully get it. We pull that healer just to um, kill it as soon as possible. He gets a value tornado, um, but it's no a big deal. His tower is solo and this is looking like a pretty sketchy, sketchy situation. Are we going to choke it? And uh, now nah, we're, we're chilling, we're chilling. With help of the fireball, we can completely defend the baby dragons. And then eagle arms, when it's just the eagle and there's no supporting troops, are pretty weak. You can kill them super fast. And at this point, I know I can just cycle a fireball log and I pick up the dub. And there you have it. Game number one so far. Okay. 
So at this point, I believe I am top three in the world. Not bad, not bad. Um, all right, heading into the next game. Pekka, um, Inferno Dragon, Tornado. He has a lot of answers for our Vol Giant, but uh, the Pekka is surprisingly one of the worst possible um, cards against my deck, just because you're able to pull up that boy with a fish that go my apologies you're able to pull the peck up with your fishman distract it with skeletons or whatever and that rg is gonna get hella value and there you see it um we completely shut down that Pekka and we get a good bit of damage with our RG. Now that I know he is running Pekka, I'm going to be able to preempt if they play that Fisherman and, and you'll just, you'll see chat. You guys will see, don't you worry. Um, so we are down, um, no, well actually even on Elixir, my bad. Perfectly even on Elixir. And he does not have Pekka in cycle. So I know I can play a really aggressive RG. Am I going to go with it? And there it is. And look at his rotation right now. He has nothing. He has to cycle a freeze and then an Inferno Dragon. And that is not ideal. He spent 8 Elixir just to defend that 6 Elixir Vel Giant. And we're going to go with a Fisherman at the bridge. This Fisherman is going to get a few hits on the tower if he ignores it. He's forced to play an Executioner. And that is value for me, boys. So forcing out a 5 Elixir card while defending the Inferno Dragon just with 3. Okay, we log and skeletons the executioner just to stop all hits and get that little bit of chip damage on the tower. Um, always cycling our heal spirits, pretty safe play. And just look at his deck. He has four spells in this deck. If you include, um, you know, graveyard. Some people don't include graveyard as a spell, but man, graveyard is a spell. I don't know what those people talk about. Um, okay, hunter in the back. Pretty safe, and he places Pekka here. I know his Inferno Dragon is out of cycle, so I know I am able to pressure the opposite. He gets a, a value tornado, but it's all good because now we can kill the Pekka easy peasy. Unfortunately, the Pekka locks on to the Hunter, but the freeze comes down anyway, so he overcommitted on defending that lane. Now, um, his Pekka and Inferno Dragon are out of cycle. He's gonna try and cycle back to his Pekka here, but I am ready with the Fisherman. That Fisherman is gonna stop him from playing any possible Pekkas in the future, and now he's forced to tornado and stuff, and it's not ideal. that We get the heal spirit down just in time before the Executioner dies, and that is a lot of RG damage on the tower with help of the Fisherman. Um, at this point, this deck is so good at spell cycling. We can spell cycle really, really easily with this deck if we have to. Um, just because it has such a fast cycle. It has skeletons, it has heal spirit, it has bats, it has log. So when it comes to cycle troops, it is big chilling. Um, we give him a value, uh, a value tornado here, but it's all good. Since the pick is dead, that RG is going to finish off the tower, and we pick up the win. Um, this brought me up to like three trophies behind the number one player at the time, so I was pissed. I wanted three extra trophies, so I was forced to play one last game. Um, and man, I was nervous. Uh, I thought maybe this guy was running Ice Bow. Ice Bow is one of the few counters to this deck, so, um, but, 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 thankfully, we were all good. Thankfully, we were chilling. Um, 2.9 is a pretty easy matchup for me, um, I believe, but I might be wrong. Just, uh, well, this isn't 2.9, this is 3.0, which is even easier because he does not have that Ice Golem. He really struggles against my bats, and as you will see this game, I get full value from my bats. So, so far, we're just playing it slow, waiting for an opening. We don't want to be too aggressive, especially against Expo, and he was too aggressive in giving, <laughs> he gives us this opening. Uh, I was ready, waiting for his archers. Unfortunately, uh, my hero spirit targets the Expo targets the expo instead so i was really hoping my heal spirit would get those archers so log plus heal could kill it but unfortunately not it's all fine though we're chilling and um, he plays his ice spirit i play my skeletons just to stop um the archers from getting too much damage on our tower and so far we are losing the game actually we are down in damage down in elixir but you know we have a lot of time left it's not over yet he's only done like 500 damage to our tower that's nothing so he plays another super aggressive expo thinking that he has outcycled my RG, but 
Uh, I'm sorry, 2.9 users, you are not able to outcycle my Valjoin in this matchup. I have just way too many cycle cards for you to be able to keep up. We play the really good bat in the middle to completely destroy that uh, Tessa before it can get any value and that's a really tanky little giant on his tower. The bats end up killing the knight and the bats will be forcing out those skeletons from my boy scorpion. So as I have to completely turn the game around at this point, I am I, I have half of his tower down and he has done barely any damage to me. And I think I know I'm I'm probably just gonna spell cycle the rest of this game. We don't even need a Val Giant connection, we just need a few fireballs and we'll be big chilling. And we're just gonna play his. Uh, my, we're just gonna play my Val Giant whenever he plays his Expo. Uh, that will always be a safe way to make sure um, he doesn't get too many defensive Expos down. And there we have it. We cycle back to another Val Giant, um, and he is just not able to get any Expo connections. The only way he wins this is if he connects with the Expo. It is too late for my man to spell cycle. He is not able to defend. Um, and there we go. We're just on the spell cycle grind, just chipping away at his tower. I know he's gonna try and outcycle my RG here, but look at that expo placement, man. Oh, that was maybe not the expo placement, my friend. So we're just gonna cycle a quick uh, two fireballs, and we will have the game. You see how fast to this deck cycles? I'm not able to keep up with my elixir, and there we have it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this gameplay pushing to number one in the world. Sorry that we didn't have any live games or anything. Um, uh, tomorrow I will be streaming my games. Uh, I will be streaming once again going for number one in the world over on Trovo. So if you want a chance, uh, we will also be doing friend link giveaways on Trovo. Uh, every single one hour I stream on Trovo, I give away one friend link. So if you want a chance to be added, um, head on over to there. That is uh, trovo.live slash thunderstruck and um, that would be really appreciated um, make sure you know to like subscribe all that stuff I will be uploading a lot more often here on YouTube I'm trying to get on that content grind I'm streaming I'm making videos I'm a content creator buzz so um, thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed peace